Welcome back to Sidemen React. We have been caught cheating before in more Sidemen challenges by Simon. Have, ha, have you? I, I say we collectively, mostly Ethan and JJ, to be honest. But, you know. <laughs> what about that time that you texted Ethan uh, the guess who uh, answered it? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know what, right? If people think Ethan is that good of an actor, we should give my guy the Oscar. <laughs> Did you not see his face? Yeah, no, he was genuinely shocked when he won that one. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't believe his own luck. We were both bored. We both wanted the video to end. It was... Uh, do, you think, uh, do, you, do you think people watching Cyber X know what we're referring to? Or do you think, they don't, what the fuck are these guys waffling about? No, they have no idea. <laughs> More Sidemen, guess who? Give it, give it a watch. It's a fun video. All right. All right, let's, let's see what the athletes and how they got caught. Since the ancient Greeks started the Olympics, human nature always found a way to cheat in sports. Mm. When large amounts of money got in the picture in the 20th century, the temptation was uh, too big. Geez. Sports cheating became a daily operation around the world here are the 10 I wonder, I wonder oh sorry to away. interrupt the video straight away but I wonder what like cheating scandal is happening right now that we don't know about yeah like there must be something like in 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 that will be revealed soon this is very true yeah how many how many great athletes actually cheat mm. or well, got away mm. with it we didn't hear it yeah. fraud. got caught and humiliated instead Michael Oof. Pineda Pintar Michael Pineda is a Dominican- Not my goat, Pineda. 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 <laughs> Not my goat. <laughs> that plays for the Minnesota Twins in the he MLB. He had some Tim running back when then. He's he just slipped out of the reason. 2014, he did something very similar to what Dwight Howard was doing in the NBA. And just like Dwight, it wasn't a problem that he did it, but how obvious he'd been about it. So, Pineda used pine tar during his time on the mound, which was illegal, but it wasn't severely penalized. I don't By know. By applying pine tar, the baseball would have a better grip and not lose any of its speed. Uh. And many pitchers throughout the league used pine tar. But during a game against the Red Sox in 2014, when it was especially cold and windy on the Fenway Park, Pineda decided he would need a lot of pine to be able to throw properly. So what, he just like rubs so it on the ball he applied or a lot of it on his neck. And from there, oh. to the baseball. Oh. It was clear as day what he was doing, and the officials immediately threw him out. Pineda got a 10-game suspension. Yeah, you got to be more discreet without my friend. Did you can't too. make it so obvious. You were a little bit smarter in not making it. You know what you could do, Harry? You could put it all over your balls, and then you could... That's where you <laughs> yeah, to be fair. your hands well, always are. And then who's going to check? Who's going to check? No one's looking down there. <laughs> Crack the code. Whoa, whoa, From Pineda. one ball to the next, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jeez. Pineda, if you're listening, man, put it on your... <laughs> put it on your goose. Corked bat. In baseball... A corked bat is a specially modified baseball bat that has been filled with cork or other less dense substances to make the bat lighter. A lighter bat gives a hitter a quicker swing and may improve the hitter's timing. Surely just weigh the bat before, I know. The famed right fielder yeah. Sammy Sosa played a game for his Chicago Cubs against Tampa Bay, and he shattered his bat in the first inning. Oh. No harm done. It happens all the time. That's all the player just gets yeah. another bat, and the game resumes. However, the plate umpire noticed pieces of cork among Ooh, the shards of the shattered oh, bat, and he rightfully ejected Sosa oh, from the game. Sosa acknowledged so so the of the bat, explaining <laughs> oh that he God. occasionally um, used it for batting practice and for home run exhibitions up. to entertain his fans. Major League Baseball then confiscated and tested 76 of Sosa's other bats after his ejection, oh, no. and all were found to be clean with no cork. Oh, no. However, the crime had been committed, and Sosa still had to serve a seven-game suspension. Oh, he could, he, do you know what that reminds me of? Do you remember after the first Logan Paul fight, there were suspicions that he had he had concrete in his gloves <laughs> to oh, make him heavier? There? I've was never there? heard this. I've never yeah. heard in whose gloves? In in Logan's gloves. There Wait, was there, was, there, was, there was a conspiracy. They had fucking concrete. There was. There, no, there was. There I wasn't. remember. I remember. I it, yeah. From who? Who was claiming that? <laughs> Look, there were people at the event. Are you like, sure? There's something. In it. I'm I'm almost positive. I think you're getting but... stories, but because that's the thing that's happened in boxing. But I've never heard of Logan having fucking concrete in his no, gloves. No, considering that's, like that's, JJ that's... didn't even go down once. I don't think that's, there was. That's, that's... Look, yeah. look, I heard a certain member of the organization of the event. Wow. He wasn't happy. He, he, was, he was convinced that Logan's gloves were heavier than they, they should have been. They wow. So it, it was concrete. They were a little bit heavier, <laughs> and he resorted to concrete instantly. <laughs> I think, oh, you little know bits of concrete in the padding, bro. I agree. I think he did it. Lump I someone. think he did it. I, I think he did it. <laughs> But you, we'll, we'll never know. We'll never know. Burrito loaded gloves. Oh, this is it. Oh, so wow. <laughs> really hard. They say that they have dynamite in their hands. In the like case pull out the dynamite. Antonio Margarito. Well, he had plaster on his hands. Before Margarito was supposed to fight Shane Mosley for the WBA welterweight title in 2009, Mosley's trainer noticed that Margarito's hands were wrapped strangely and asked for the wrap tape to be examined. The coach had a great eye and was right to be suspicious. Wow. But Margarito's hand wraps were cut off. 
the match officials found small knuckle pads made of plaster, oh, which is used Matt. to make casts. The purpose of the plaster was to add more damage to Margarito's opponent. Wow, the Mexican wait. boxer said he was unaware of the pads, and his coach took all the blame to himself. Margarito was forced to rewrap his hands and would go on to lose the fight and the title good. Oh, good. after yeah. the match. He and his coach were suspended from boxing in the United States for one year. Wow. Rosie Ruiz. I'm not going to lie. All of these uh, punishments have been pretty... Yeah, slap on the wrist type beat. It's a lot of like, like, too much games. money, bro. Boxers take a year off anyway. That's not that crazy. Yeah, and all the like the baseball player was seven games. I, th I think I think that pine. I think that's probably very common. So like, eh, we'll, yeah. we'll give it here. Yeah, but anyway, what's Rosie Ruiz done? Let's see. Chris Rock once joked victory. about the marathon okay, being yeah. too long, saying that. Oh, I think she got in the car and drove, oh, drove for it. Alone having to run the whole thing. Rosie Ruiz thought so too, but unlike Chris Rock, she wanted to win the 1980 Boston Marathon. So what do you do if you want to win the longest racing event no. and don't actually want to run 28 not, miles you and do it faster than everyone else? Well, you just start running close to the finish line and hope oh, nobody what? notices. <laughs> Rosie finished the 1980 Boston Marathon oh. with the official time of 2 hours, 31 minutes and 56 That's seconds, right. long, which was the third fastest time ever run by oh a woman. Even though God. the victory time of an unknown runner raised some suspicions, she was awarded the gold medal and oh. got celebrated like a true champion. <laughs> After a few days, several spectators came out and said that they saw Ruiz join the race about half a mile from the finish line <laughs> because she was never seen by the other runners and didn't appear in any photographs or footage of the race. Oh, that's elite. It became apparent that she cheated. They stripped the title away from you. Know what? I think she, she tricks everyone. Yeah, she penalty. deserves it. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, you, you pulled a good enough scam there. You, yeah. should, you should let her have the, the victory. There. Imagine you had an identical twin. So you start the race, oh, yeah, and then yeah. they and they run in. Yeah. <laughs> Your tag team. You like marathon. go because they have like portaloos on the way. You go in a portaloo, do a little switcheroo, yeah, and go up. Yeah, yeah, good shout. Hand amazing. of God. Two of the most famous goals Maradona ever scored happened in the same game during the 1986 World Cup quarterfinals against England. The second one was an absolute stunner when Diego took the ball oh, in his oh. own half and dribbled past every defender and the goalkeeper. It was a genius goal from the best player in the world. The first goal he scored in that game was also genius, but in an entirely different way. As the deflected ball was traveling through the air and elite. into the hands of England's I goalie, the elite, to be fair. the yeah. five foot five Maradona somehow got it first. And because it, it kind of, of from a net. distance, it looks yeah. like well, he just headed players it. Protested. Yeah. Ref didn't see that Maradona had flicked the ball with his hand, which ultimately helped Argentina win Surely the game the ref must and proceed have to the thought, semifinals. Like, okay, how did a five foot five guy beat a keeper with his arms up? Yeah. This game interview, so had a... Diego cheekily said that if it really was a handball, that it was a hand of God. Lance Armstrong, <laughs> steroids, Pane Aqua, but they all love fucking steroids. Water, and cycling, the classic Bazinga scam. Cycling clean and not <laughs> Lance Armstrong was cycling on Pane Aqua for the first part of the I'm 90s. He and he was a talented rider without a doubt. Just hear this is Jim Shock brand deal. Just results. <laughs> After he successfully won his battle with testicular cancer. Lance returned to cycling in 1998, but he didn't use bread and water for fuel anymore. He had something much more potent. Lance started using erythropoietin, or EPO in short. EPO stimulates the production of red blood cells and enables athletes who inject it to have more oxygen in their blood. Mm. More oxygen increases endurance, which is crucial for a sport like cycling. Cycling's a brutal Lance would sport, go on to win yeah. seven Tour de France's in a row, Effort. which is the hardest and most prestigious multiple stage bicycle race. Didn't he have multiple types of cancer? Oh, he did. No, he had something. Yeah, he, he did have something. Uh, oh, it spread. He had oh, metastatic no. testicular cancer. It spread to his abdomen, lungs, and brain. Oh, fuck. And he, what? He's all right? And, uh, yeah. I'm saying he's allowed to cheat. He was given a 50-50 and then a 40% chance of survival, but he did it. Fucking hell, fair play. He's, he's allowed a little steroid. Yeah, let him cheat, man. Yeah. There's some, there's, there's some like stats as well. Like if you took out like every, in the top like, tw I'm making fucking numbers up here, but there's it's something like if you take the top like 20 cyclists, like and all of them have been done for cheating at some point. Like they're all on fucking steroids. So like he's, yeah. I think he still deserves his plaudits because everyone's cheating, man. He's just better. Yeah. He was better <laughs> than insiders anyway. knew he was cheating. Lance never failed a drug test, which he gladly mm. repeated at almost every interview. He had the best doctors who instructed him how far from a race he can use PEDs, mask positive results, avoid being detected, or avoid being tested in the first place. However, Ooh. in 2013, after a massive investigation from USADA and testimony of many witnesses, including his former teammates, Armstrong was finally forced to admit he was doping throughout his career. 
Dwight yeah, Howard. I remember somebody said they should do an Olympics where yes. all, 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 yeah, it was well, Eastside that yeah. said this. Yeah, yeah every, I take whatever you want, just go as fast as yeah, you can. Yeah, I want to see the fastest <laughs> human no matter Real what speed. they take. Real yeah. speed, bro. I want to see 100 meters in four juice. seconds. <laughs> I want to see a juice Usain Bolt do. Yeah. yeah. The, the people, people, yeah, you end up killing people though. They do stuff and then their heart rate would spike and shit True. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Dwight Howard. Eh, Stick up. Oh. It. Dwight Howard is now a win role player whose NBA job is primarily to play defense and get rebound. But some five to ten years ago, he had a more prominent role at higher usage rate. Even though he was never a good post player, Howard would still demand the ball down low. And to make it easier for himself to catch entry and lob passes, Dwight used Stickum. Stickum is an adhesive spray Stick that enhances <laughs> grip, which is pretty useful if you're well, he trying just to catch it on his balls. Hands. And it's illegal in both the NBA and the NFL. Uh, Dwight right. has been using it for years, but in the game between his Rockets and the Hawks in 2016, he must have applied too much, and the other players noticed something was weird with the ball. The refs intervened, paused the game, and came over to Houston's bench, where one Stickum can was visible, <laughs> treacherously uh... revealing why the ball was so sticky all of a sudden. The Rockets were warned to stop using the spray, but neither the team nor Howard was penalized for the use of it. <laughs> got away with Tanya it. Harding, <laughs> Hitman. Tanya oh my Harding god, Nancy this is mad. What? This is mad. Yeah. She fucking broke her opponent's legs. Like, she got someone to. I think this is the one thing that the best uh, American set. figure skaters in the late <sighs> 80s and early 90s. One day before the U.S. National Championship, which also served as the qualifiers for the 1994 Olympics, Nancy Kerrigan was brutally attacked after practice in Detroit. A man jumped at Kerrigan as she was heading to the locker room and beat her up with a club, attempting to break her legs. What? <gasps> Thankfully, she only suffered deep bruises and escaped with no broken bones. But still, she was unable to participate in the U.S. Nationals, where Harding took the first place and a guaranteed spot in the Olympics. After an FBI investigation into Harding's bodyguard Sean Eckhart and ex-husband Jeff Galuli, Eckhart buckled, admitted his involvement in the incident, and organization of the attack with the attacker Shane Stant. Harding oh, denied her involvement mad. at first, even though her ex-husband pleaded guilty and Oof. testified against her just a few weeks before the Olympics. Despite the scandal, there was not sufficient evidence of Harding's what? involvement. She got away with it. Was of course, to it was the her. Olympics together with Kerrigan, who was also granted a spot. In the most anticipated skating event ever in the United States, Kerrigan took home the silver medal, while Harding finished eighth due to skate malfunction. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. The case continued. Although, did they, I'm just saying, did they look Harding into the skate malfunction? Yeah, maybe there's something to it. Yeah, maybe, oh, maybe yeah, it was okay. revenge. Yeah. Officially pleaded guilty. She received three years probation, a $160,000 fine, and got banned from skating forever. Oh, Mike Tyson. Even so, you're trying to break someone's legs. That's pretty fucking extreme. Yeah. yeah. First and most famous loss came against Buster Douglas in 1991. That happened because Mike was barely practicing for the fight. But when Tyson first fought Holyfield in 1996, oh, yeah. Evander showed the world that Tyson could be beaten and pretty much dominated throughout the fight. Tyson immediately asked for a rematch, and he got it simply because he was the biggest star in boxing at the time. When the rematch started. Mike simply didn't have it in it, and he knew it. He didn't want to be in that ring on that night, and everything he threw, Holyfield mm. had an answer for. Tyson couldn't exert dominance over his opponent. Plus, he only had the stamina for about half the fight. Knowing that he would lose in the later rounds, hissed at himself <laughs> and the world due to oh, a debauched lifestyle bit. he was leading. Mike couldn't this. take it anymore. He was full of hate, and he wanted to express it, but he couldn't do it with his hands like he usually oh, did with all of his oh, opponents. Goodness. So. Tyson took a bite out of Evander's ear and bit off a piece of it. He was immediately disqualified, pain, which was is. the beginning of the end of his storied career. So did they Tom not? Brady, did he spit his gum game. shield out? I've never. I've yeah, never I don't know how he managed was. to bite his. No, he must have. Because you still have your bottom teeth, right? Yeah. I think, he, I think he's chomped it like. Uh, Chompers. That's grim. In 2006, the NFL changed the rule where the home team provided all the footballs for the game and instead oh, enabled the away gate. team to use their own footballs mm -hmm. on offense. In no, 2014, deflate. Tom Brady used this rule to his advantage in the AFC Championship game against the Indianapolis Colts and his quarterback rival, Andrew Luck. While Luck was throwing balls that were per NFL rules inflated between 12.5 to 13.5 pounds per square inch, Tom Brady deliberately ordered for his footballs to be slightly deflated. By removing air from a football, it makes it easier to grip, throw, and catch, and thus gives mm. an unfair advantage for the team that's using deflated balls on offense. Mm, After nice. Brady threw an interception to Colts linebacker Dequell Jackson, the linebacker gave it to the equipment manager to keep as a souvenir. 
And that's when the trouble began. Uh. The Colts equipment manager thought there was something weird with the ball and notified the league officials. After examination, it was determined Whoa. that 11 of the 12 balls the Patriots were using in the game were deflated uh. and averaging around 1.5 wow. pounds of pressure less than the minimum amount. Wow. The balls got reinflated at halftime, and the Patriots turned their 10-point halftime lead into a 45-7 victory and advanced to the Super Bowl. Okay. Although the game was a blowout, even with all the balls equally inflated, Deflategate became a national scandal, and Brady gate. got suspended for four games, while the Patriots were fined with millions of dollars and forfeited two future draft picks. Wow, hey. Isn't he like always the GOAT, though? He's, he is the yeah, GOAT. Yeah, 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 he yeah. is he's the GOAT. I deflated, deflated. <laughs> On occasion, I think overall he's still, he's still He's like 40-something. He's still playing, right? He's, yeah. he's, he's crazy or something, something stupid. Well, there we go. Uh, there's proof that if you can get away with it, cheating pays off. <laughs> <laughs> Give it your best shot, boys. All right, we'll see you in a bit.